Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James, this is your Mouthpiece Monday. Today, we're talking about solo divers versus the Insta Buddy. Oh mama, this is gonna be good. Roll intro. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to our channel, Divers Ready. As a professional diving instructor, my passion is to make you a better diver. So we put up content that features hints and tips, travel advice and techniques and skills to help you improve as a diver and make your next dive that 1% better than your last dive. A special welcome today to all the mother divers out there. Happy Mother's Day. I'll be calling my mum as soon as I finish filming this. Later in this video, I'm gonna give you five tips when faced with diving with an Insta Buddy. And I'm gonna tell you what I mean by Insta Buddy a little bit later on. But first, let's tackle the subject of solo divers. I wanted to make this video because a lot of single divers out there who don't have a regular diving partner, don't have a regular buddy, may be discouraged from continuing on in the sport if they don't feel like they've got someone to dive with and always have to use the buddy system as you're taught at open water level. And I don't want to discourage anyone from the sport at all, but I want to put the options out there for people who don't have a regular dive partner. As a dive professional, I solo dive a lot. In fact, most of the dives I've done for the last 10 years have been solo dives. I know what you're thinking, but James, you're an instructor, so you're in the water all the time with your students. And that's true, but I can't consider my students to be my buddy when I'm diving with them for the simple reason that they're learning to dive. Their focus is on themselves, their focus is on their skills, rightfully so. So I don't really have a buddy in that situation. Could I trust my students to save my life in the event that I had an emergency? And the answer to that is probably no, which means I need to be prepared as any good solo diver should. As an instructor, I have liability for my students. I am legally responsible for them. There's no court in the land that would identify a student as being legally responsible for their instructor. Ergo, I am solo diving without a buddy, even if I'm in the water with a student. But let me be very clear. There's a big difference between solo diving and just going for a dive alone. And that difference is self-reliance. In other words, you are completely equipped to handle any situation that could arise and willing to accept the risks of diving without having a buddy with you. So if we can use the term solo diver and self-reliant diver interchangeably, shouldn't all divers be self-reliant and, and therefore capable of executing a solo dive? Well, in theory, yes. Every certified diver should be able to set their own dive gear up, run through a check, uh, make a safe entry, conduct a safe dive within all the established limits, make a safe ascent, surface and exit the water in a safe manner. I mean, those are the minimum requirements for an open water qualification. Why should you take a solo diver course? There are three reasons that I can think of. Number one reason that you might enjoy being a solo diver is solitude. You know, some of the things that I love most about the scuba diving are no phone calls, no emails, no talking to people, a minimum of 45 minutes of uninterrupted peace. It's heaven. Number two reason, maybe you're a photographer and you just want to drop down to the sand for 45 minutes and get that sweet photo of that mandarin fish. And your buddy's not really into that. They want to go off and explore the reef and see all the different fish. Perfectly understandable and a very good reason to do the solo diver course. And third, and my final reason that you might want to do a solo diver course, is if you're uncomfortable taking responsibility for a complete stranger. There are travel groups dedicated to buddyless divers who want to go off and, and get a full vacations diving in. They don't want to pay single room rate premiums, but these groups at the same time have an advantage of putting people together so that you can learn who you're going to be rooming with, who you're going to be diving with during your vacation. And they do a really excellent job at that. But if you're a buddyless diver that just goes on vacation and rocks up to a dive boat alone, the chances are that the operator is going to pair you with somebody who you're meeting for the first time and you don't know much about them. And that is what we call the Insta Buddy. An Insta Buddy is basically a stranger diver. Now, I've been an Insta Buddy before and got paired up on a dive boat, and I've had some amazing experiences. And one of the great things about scuba diving is going out a stranger and coming back firm friends because you have this shared experience. But it can also lead to some nightmare experiences if you're laden with a buddy who is perhaps uh, not as responsible, not as skilled, or not as conservative as you are. 
So in that situation where you rock up to a dive center alone, the dive center basically has three choices. They can either insta-buddy you up with another alone, single, spare diver, which is what we call the insta-buddy scenario, or they may provide a dive guide in the water, in which case the dive plan is like, you eight, follow me. This can work out either really well if everyone knows what they're doing and they're happy to just follow along, or it can be a stress-filled nightmare for the poor dive master or instructor they choose to put in the water. I've been in that situation. If you've got eight problem children and only two hands to deal with them, it is not pretty. Please remember to tip your dive guide well. You also get dive operators that don't provide a complimentary dive guide in the water and also refuse to insta-buddy. I fully support dive operators who refuse to insta-buddy. I'm 100% behind them. Why, you may ask? Well, think about it from the operator's perspective. You're asking one guest to take responsibility for another guest. Make no mistake, whoever is the most experienced diver of the insta-buddy pair is the one that's gonna be shouldering the most responsibility on the dive. There's a poll on one of the scuba forums, and I'll link it in the description of this video below, that surveys people who have been put in an InstaBuddy situation and simply asks, was it a positive or negative experience? And at the time of recording this video, there were nearly 200 respondents, and 69% of them said that they'd had a negative experience with an InstaBuddy. So why then, as a dive operator, would you want 69% of your single divers' experiences with your organization to be negative? In that instance, that dive operator usually has a policy of, if you don't have a buddy, you have to pay for a private guide. I know this irks single divers, and some people call it a loaner tax. But remember, if you're asked to pay for a private guide, it's not the operator trying to make more money off of you, it's the operator trying to protect their other divers' experiences. Remember, you can call a dive at any time for any reason, and having no confidence in your Insta buddy is a pretty good reason to call a dive before it's even begun. So then there's your options. You can either hire a private dive guide, accept an Insta buddy, or take a solo diving course. So if you've decided to accept an Insta buddy and you're okay with adding a little bit of stranger danger to your dive plan, I wanna give you five tips to help you get the best experience with your newfound scuba buddy. Step number one, ask questions and share your experience. Try not to make it feel like an interrogation. Have a friendly chat with them. Find out how long have they been diving, when was their last dive? What type of diving do they usually do? This should tell you everything you need to know. If they're a frequent diver who regularly does challenging or difficult dives, if they keep their education up to date, all of these things should be encouraging signs. Ask them about the dive that's coming up. What do they hope to get out of it? What are they particularly interested in? And at the same time, be honest with them about your own experience and capabilities as a diver. Step number two is watch them set their gear up. Whilst you're setting your gear up and you're double, triple checking it, keep half an eye on them as well. You can tell a lot about a diver by the way they set their gear up. Do they move fluidly? Do they know where all their accessories mount? Do they test their gear thoroughly? And also at that point ask, is there anything that you need to know about their setup? Point number three is agree on a plan that you're both comfortable with. Now, of course, that goes for any buddy pair on any dive, but it's especially important if you're diving with someone you're unfamiliar with. You don't know their comfort levels and they don't know yours. For example, if they want to do swim throughs of a wreck, but that's not something you're particularly comfortable with, you absolutely need to bring that up and discuss it before you get in the water. Otherwise, once you get down there, it's just going to be chaos. What's their focus for the dive? What's your focus for the dive? What are the agreed upon limits? What are you comfortable with? All of these things need to be discussed. Make sure you agree on where you're gonna be in relation to each other. What are your emergency procedures? What's their alternate air source? Where is yours? What's the out of air procedure? Refresh each other on the lost buddy protocols. Clear, concise communication when planning the dive is gonna to lead to a smoother, better executed dive. Factor number four is dive the plan. No variations, no improvisations. Make sure that the hand signals you're using once you're in the water are the ones you agreed upon during the plan, so there's no interpretive dance moves going off, leading to utter confusion. And factor number five for enjoying a pleasurable InstaBuddy experience is be sure to stay in touch. 
If you got along, if you had a great dive together, make sure you exchange contact information. Reach out on social media, share the photos and the videos you took on your dive together, because if you continue to do that throughout your diving career, soon enough, you'll never need an Insta buddy because you'll have built your own network of divers that you're familiar and comfortable with diving with. One of the greatest pleasures in my life is being able to build a network of friends around the world who all share my passion for diving. And if you do that, if you stay in touch with these people in the various places that you meet, you're gonna build a network of your own and you're gonna need an Insta buddy less and less often. Please make your next dive right on that subscribe button. It'll mean the world to us, helps us to keep making these videos. If you click the bell icon, you're gonna be notified every time we drop a new video. And feel free to hit the like as well, makes us feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Let us know in the comments below, have you had an Insta Buddy experience? Was it a pleasurable one? Are you a solo diver? And if so, why did you choose to take that certification? Until next time, my name's James. This was your Divers Ready Mouthpiece Monday. Dive safe, dive often, and go call your mum.